All right, everybody, welcome back. Sports Bash Live, 97.3 ESPN on a Thursday. Phil's with a uh, kind of an ugly loss last night. I said yesterday, and I'll tell my next guest, Frank Close from 97.3 ESPN.com, who covers the Phil's. And, Frank, I was telling the people yesterday, look, if the Phillies lose this game with Zach Wheeler, this should be a four-game sweep with the way they won that first game and then with Nola Wheeler, Eflin set up the rest of the way. But Wheeler... You know, seven runs, four earns, five and two-thirds last night. But not all his fault, but kind of a disappointing loss with Wheeler on the mound. You you, you expect to win those games, man. You do. You definitely feel good about Zach Wheeler being on the mound after winning those first two. You started to have dreams of a sweep, but then they kind of came out of the gate a little rough and, and never really were able to recover. Yeah, it was an early, uh, I guess, uh, the DD error opened the door as a three-run first inning, so that's not really on Wheeler. Uh, he gave up two more runs in the second. I guess he kind of settled down, and then they took him out late, and he did not <laughs> He did not seem like he was ready to come off the mound in that spot. Yeah, that was a, that's a tough one. I, I kind of understand Joe Girardi not wanting to leave him in to give up his own runs, but you thought that Connor Brogdon, who has been, basically been your most reliable reliever, throughout the course of the season that he would be able to get one more out and get them out of that mess. And it kind of, kind of went out of control from there. You know, the Phillies had just come back with those three runs and the, the McCutcheon home run, you started to think, okay, well this, this could turn back to the Phillies favor. And then unfortunately never got back that way. Yeah. I mean, that's a tough spot. So let's kind of break that down a little bit here because you mentioned it. Um, Wheeler, it's there's two outs in the sixth. I mean, he basically one more out to go. They go to Brogdon, and I agree. I like Brogdon. I feel like he's a guy, he's the one piece in that bullpen that's young and you feel like could be something down the line here. So I like Brogdon, but in that spot, don't I want my ace to get out of his own mess? Yeah, you know, I, in a way, though, it felt like he was kind of on borrowed time, you know, with those, with those earlier runs, him not being as sharp as he was. And let's face it, even though there was an error, he still gave up the base hits that, that really allowed those runs to pile up. So, you know, in this game, if you have two outs, then, then really anything that, that kind of happens from there becomes unearned. But but he was unable to shut them down, too. So it seemed like this was not a sharp Zach Wheeler start like we've seen as of late. So, you know, maybe they just felt like they didn't want to press their luck last night when they're trying to, to really uh, win those games out in Chicago that they should win and need to win in order to really stay in this thing. Yep, uh, disappointing last night, but they get a chance to win three out of four here before they go to Boston. Uh, and, of course, uh, you know, they lose with Wheeler last night. Let's look at some of the other things that are going on with this team. And uh, you had mentioned the other day in your uh, – I believe it was in your mailbag about Cam Bedrosian, um, you know, and the Phillies uh, reportedly bringing him on board. He was designated for assignment by the A's. He was let go by the Reds earlier, had a real rough start to this season – kind of settled in with the A's. Tell us what you know about him and how you envision him maybe fitting in here. Yeah, he's nice. He's been a back-end reliever at times in, in Los Angeles with the Angels. And and when he was a free agent this offseason, I, you know, I thought maybe the Phillies could grab somebody like him. I mean, he's not. He's certainly not his father who's going to give you a Cy Young Award-winning season out of the bullpen. But but you know what? He's, he's, he's a veteran. He's got some experience. Um earlier this year with the Reds, he didn't have it. The, the A's pick him up. He gives up two earned in his nine appearances. Not bad. Um, but the, the A's have a pretty decent bullpen. He kind of got caught up in the numbers crunch. And, you know, I thought that'd be important for the Phillies to bring somebody from outside the organization that maybe can come in and get some outs. And it doesn't have that, you know, I, I feel more and more as we look at this team that, that, that when things go bad, they, they seem to, <laughs> they almost play down to it. And it'd be nice to have somebody from an outside perspective, not 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 feeling like the bullpen's going to implode the moment he walks into a game. And so huh. I, there's I, a lot of pressure I, on him then, man. Hey, you're <laughs> a new guy from a different organization. Please come here and fix this. That hasn't worked, though. David Hale, uh, Brandon Workman, um, you know, you name the guy who's who's have come in here. They Just because you've come from another organization, that doesn't seem to have worked for this team. Yeah, I def that's definitely the case, especially last year. But you know what? It just just having some extra blood. I mean, the Phillies didn't really add many players from outside the organization so far. So, um, so Cam Pedrosian, he's up at AAA Lehigh Valley. He'll get a, get a chance to kind of get get going. They assigned him his his dad's old Phillies number up there, number forty, which is kind of neat. Uh, and you know, we'll see what he can do. It, it you know, the, the nice thing is this is a minor league signing, so it's not like it's a high pressure type move, but 
But if he shows he can help the Phillies, it's always good to have extra pitching around. Well, that's what it feels. Uh, you know, he's going to AAA, and then I guess the next question, Frank, is so they got to make a spot for him if they need him. If they want to bring him up, they got to make a spot for him. So is it someone in the bullpen that goes? Well, there's there's a lot of things that they could do. Um, Matt Joyce is rehabbing for the Phillies at Class A Clearwater, uh, Low A Clearwater, as it is this year. Um, I, I don't know that Matt Joyce is going to stick around on this team. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't think there's a spot for him to come back to as a left-handed backup outfielder. I think Travis Jankowski has done just fine. So, you know, when the Phillies activate someone like Joyce, he might actually ultimately get cut after that. So, so there's there's some ways that you can find that spot for him there. The Phillies technically have an extra spot right now, uh, but Chase Anderson uh, on the COVID list, uh, he is rehabbing at AAA Lehigh Valley, so uh, Anderson probably will come take that roster spot soon, but if you needed somebody before Anderson is ready, well, then you have a shot to maybe use that 40-man spot for just a hot minute. Frank Close covers the fills for 97.3 ESPN. Dot com. So, obviously, the Bedrosian signing yesterday, we'll see if and when they call him up. Phillies relievers, 25th in ERA. They have blown a league worth 22 saves. So, can Bedrosian help that out? We'll see. What about the bullpen right now, Frank? What are the roles? How is it setting up? We're about halfway uh, through the season. We'll have the uh, All-Star game on Tuesday night. So, do we have roles? Uh, how should the roles look coming out of the uh, the gate? Well, that, that, that's kind of a tough question. You know, uh, what you kind of realized last night when Zach Wheeler got off to a slow start is that you really don't have a long man at the moment. Um, Bailey Falter has been used less and less in that longer role. Um, you know, he, he did pitch the longer outing the other night in Chicago, but um, I guess he's your long man-ish. Uh, Ranger Suarez is your closer-ish <laughs> at the moment. Um and I, and I think really Brogdon and, and Alvarado are your and uh, uh, Archie Bradley, the three of them are your your seventh and eighth inning. Uh, if if you're if you're able to get a lead. Now, one thing that is encouraging, by the way, is just so far two outings, uh, both against the Cubs. Brandon Kinsler is looking a little bit better, so maybe after he, he's healed from that injury, he can give the Phillies what they envisioned when they signed him this off season. So. Uh, so I could see Kinsler kind of moving back towards the, the back of the bullpen a little bit. But but really, I think they're going to just have to roll with Ranger Suarez and and, and hopefully Hector Neris figures things out because um, they really could they really could use him. Otherwise, they're just kind of wasting a roster spot on somebody that's not necessarily contributing. And as we saw on Sunday, when Neris came in uh, down four, just trying to keep the Phillies to hang in there a little bit, um, th- things didn't go his way. He didn't get that called third strike and he kind of fell apart. So. Uh, you know, it, it really is as much a flux as it is, as it really ever was for this Phillies team. So, you know, maybe as you get towards the end of July, Dave Dombrowski is going to try to add some arms here uh, beyond Bedrosian. But uh, they're, they're just trying to tread water at this point, I think. And um, if you keep scoring a lot of runs like they did against the Cubs the first couple games, I mean, you might not have to worry about it so much, but uh, but it remains a concern. No question. Uh, now, I want to go to, yeah, the bullpen's a huge concern. That's uh, being understated a little bit by you there, Frank. Uh, let's go to <laughs> the lineup. I want to get your opinion on this. Uh, they sat down Herrera, I guess, for rest. They did, you know, they said, you know, hey, he's been kind of struggling a little bit. They wanted them to kind of recharge the battery. And in his absence, they moved Gene Segura to the leadoff spot. Does he stick in that spot? Yeah, I think you leave him alone. Uh, he's by far your been your most consistent hitter this whole season. And you want him getting up to the, the plate as much as possible. And so if you lead him off, and, and honestly, I like the configuration that they, they had the last couple of nights where the center fielder batted eighth. Um, you know, Dubal Herrera, when he came back up and had some success, where did he where did he have that success? It's when he was batting eighth. And so, uh, you know, the Phillies moved him to the leadoff spot and they, they, they haven't gotten anything out of him in that leadoff spot. So, so if you're the Phillies, you know, you might want to, stack the lineup so that your your hottest hitters are all kind of in a row. And I think you saw that lineup pay dividends the last couple nights when you had um, you really all your big boys driving in all those runs. And so I would I would leave Segura alone. I would keep uh, the center fielder down in the in the batting order. By the way, uh, Odupo Herrera batting just 236 as a leadoff hitter. And he's not walking either. He's well, only I mentioned, got three Frank, walks. Segura's best numbers in his career in Seattle were out of the leadoff spot. I had mentioned him as the leadoff guy back when McCutcheon was struggling a little bit, and they obviously uh, didn't go that route. He's obviously been their most 
best and most consistent hitter. So I like that. They've gone with Real Muto in the two spot. It looks like that Hoskins uh, in the two spot experiment is over. Yeah, that, that, I, I never understood that from the start. But you know what? If you have these guys healthy, uh, you, you know, you can you can you can have Segura leading off if if if. Andrew McCutcheon is going to give you what he's giving you right now. Well, then, yeah, put him in the middle of the middle of the order. He doesn't need to be up in the order. So, so I kind of like that configuration. Uh, Odubo Herrera batted three twenty four as an eight hole hitter. Um, again, two thirty six as a leadoff hitter. So I think it's much better if he's much better suited down in the lineup. Or if Travis Jankowski plays, you don't worry about it as much either. But yeah, they got to do something. They they can't they can't leave Odubo Herrera there because, as you said, when when you had uh, Herrera Hoskins one two. You know, you wonder why Bryce Harper took him so long to hit anything but a solo home run. It took him till what? It's 14th home run to, <laughs> you know, uh, in, in yeah. a row. To, to, you got two guys uh, who's on base percentage is under 350. Right. So, I mean, how, how is he going to have anybody on base if he, <laughs> if, if uh, uh, he hits a home run? So, so yeah, you need you need you need people on base in front of Harper, and the way to do that is to start with Gene Segura. Uh, Frank Close is uh, covering the Phillies, of course, as they get ready to finish the series tonight against the Cubs. And then they got a three-gamer against the Red Sox before the All-Star break. And, Frank, this seems like, you know, it's an interesting time because it's funny. Yesterday, uh, the Phillies had won a couple in a row. They had Wheeler on the mound. And it felt like, hey, if you win the game again, if you sweep these Cubs, you could possibly be like three, three and a half games back of the Mets going into the series and you're feeling pretty good going to the all-star break that loss last night now you play again and then you have the red sox coming up that's going to be a tough task all of a sudden you could go from feeling decent to changing that so how do you think we're going to be feeling about this team at the all-star break well the the mets are about to go play four against the pirates and uh at least on paper they should take care of business against the pirates but then again we we saw that uh other teams have not taken <laughs> taken advantage of the Pirates. Uh, so, um, but really, yeah, the next seven. Actually, side note: the next seven games that the Mets play in the regular season are against the Pirates. So those 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 will be a, an opportunity for the Mets maybe to try to recover uh, a little bit. Um, but you know, the, the things could look a little bit different when you head into the All Star break. Even as you know, if if, if the Mets happen to, to take a take a good amount against the Pirates, and the Mets happen to and the Phillies, you know. If they go one and two, it might look worse on paper. Uh, but I think what's really going to matter, not so much as what happens at the break, but so what happens after the break, where the Phillies have 12 games in division. And I think it's those division games which are really going to determine if the Phillies can either hang with the division or if they can't. And then if they if they, if they decide in those 12 games that they can't hang in the division, well, then there's some real decisions to make. So, um, you know, this weekend against the, the Red Sox, you know, it would be nice that the Phillies could – could take take the series, but I mean they have to at least win one, and if they win one, um, they're they're probably still hanging around as much as they're hanging around now. But 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 at the end of the day, you know the the, the Red Sox series is probably their last tough series uh, for the foreseeable future outside of their own division opponents. And when they, they get back to this All Star break, they got to take care of those. Yeah, they got a lot of those coming up. We we mentioned this uh, earlier in the show. You know, coming up they've got coming right out of the the second half of the season. You know. You got NL East games piled on top of each other. You've got four gamers with uh, Washington. Uh, you've got a four gamer with Atlanta. You've got the four gamer with Miami to start things off, and then a three game set with the Pittsburgh, and right back to a four gamer with Washington, and then a three gamer with the Mets. So the NL East could be decided maybe right after the All Star break. I mean, it's going to be a, a big factor now if they beat each other up and split it. Fine, but if somebody takes advantage of those couple series. That could be a, a big. Uh, this could be a big stretch right out of the All Star break. Miami, Washington, twice eight games against Washington, uh, Atlanta for four, and then three against the Mets. Yeah, I really want to see what the Phillies do against Nick Pavetta this weekend. By the way, <laughs> I think that's 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 something which will be uh, interesting when the Phillies uh, get to face uh, their old foe, right? So he's been been pretty good. They did all right uh, against Arietta. Yeah, yeah, they did okay against Arietta, but but Sunday they're going to go into the break. Aaron Nola versus Nick Pavetta. I think that that one's going to be the one that really determines how this weekend goes. But you're right. You know, once 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 they're done with this, you know, I think they can hang in against Martin Perez, who's who's been good, but you know, he still has some holes. And and Garrett Richards, you know, has just been okay. So I mean, the Phillies are catching uh, the the back end the back end of this Boston Red Sox rotation. They might be able to hang in and play ball, but of course, the Red Sox offense is is something. So. 
Um, you know, a lot depends on do we get the good Aaron Nola, the poor Aaron Nola? Do we get the good Vince Velasquez, the bad Vince Velasquez? So, uh, but 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 really, yeah, you know, if they can hang in there and win win at least one, then the, really the story will be told after the All Star break with all those division games. Agree there. Uh, I want to get last thought. Boom. Uh, this is a guy last year came up. He was an exciting hitter. Looked like a guy that they could really build around in the offensive lineup. He's been hitting eighth. I mean, struggling defensively. That we know. What do we? What is what our thoughts on? It's funny. Mike Trout made his debut eleven ten years ago this week. Um, that first year he hit two twenty or something, uh, and then his next year, his full rookie season, he ends up winning Rookie of the Year. It's almost reverse for Bohm. He hit what three forty last year. And we're like, wow, this guy looks like a cornerstone type of player. And now he's reverted back to a guy that I, I don't know what to think of him. You know, small sample size last year. Uh, you know, I think it was a small enough sample size you thought you could live with his defense. You can't. Um, but, but his bat, I'm not worried about his bat. I still I still think he's going to be a good contact hitter. You might not want to bat him eighth. You know, I, I think the Phillies would be better off with the center fielder hitting eighth and Bohm batting seventh because uh, batting ahead of the pitcher, you know, they, they see, I think the opposition knows he can really take take a ball for, for, for a long drive, right? So, I don't think he's going to see as many good pitches to hit batting eighth. So I'd rather see him be seventh uh, if you're the Phillies. Put put the center fielder, whether it's Herrera or Jankowski or, or whoever else uh, <laughs> uh, who's playing center field in that eight hole, and then the, then you won't have to worry about uh, Bohm being pitched around to get to the pitcher. So I, I think I think you need to hang in there with him. I think uh, you know a few weeks ago I thought I thought okay, well maybe the Phillies should maybe finally consider sending him down for a little bit or doing something just to, you know, when, when Didi and, and Segura got back where your infield could handle it a little bit more, but you know, in the last, the last 15 games or so he's been okay. The last, the last 30 games he's hitting three Oh seven. So, you know, his bat is, his bat has come around a little bit. Um, no power. I, I like, I like him seventh because he can drive in some runs there. Yeah. Just disappointing with the power. It looks like he is, uh, just completely lost that uh, the power stroke that he kind of you know has displayed in his past, especially back you know when he got drafted number three overall. You thought you had a guy who was going to yeah. be uh, a power hitter, and you need that on the corners. You can't have his defense on the corners, so he's going to be an interesting guy to see what they end up doing with down yeah. the road. Yeah, his one home run was off infielder Eric Sogard. So, but who knows? Maybe maybe hitting that home run will help uh, help give him a little bit more confidence that yeah. he can hit a home run again. All right, Frank Close, at Frank Close, and the Phillies take on the uh, Cubs tonight. And, of course, uh, Zach Eflin gets the ball for the Phillies as they uh, had four night games at Wrigley. That hasn't happened since 2012, I think, is the last time. that I don't like series. it. No, man. You, and you were just out there, right? I was. I One of my favorite things is to, to go to the, the Wrigley Day games. But, uh, no, I, I, it felt like I was waiting around all day. I got to the first two games of the series, but – it felt like I was just waiting around all day for the game, and that's not what you're supposed to do in Chicago. No. Uh, Wrigley Field, got to go. If you've ever never been there, take the trip, do it. Do a day game and a night game. I've never done a night game there, so I'd like to see what it's like. But I would imagine, did you get uh, tangled up in the beer snake? <laughs> beer snake? Did you see that? No. They On TV, they kept showing all the, the cups. They connect the cups and the crowd, and they're going from, like, the first level. You didn't see that in the bleachers? I was not in the. I I was sitting in nice seat, nicer seats behind home plate ish. Oh, okay. uh, right. <laughs> so uh, no, you you can't actually you can't walk. One thing about Wrigley, you can't walk all the way around. So I was not privy to what was going on in the bleachers. But gotcha. obviously, those Cubs fans, the first couple yeah. games, just needed a, something to entertain themselves. Just do a search for uh, the, the 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 Wrigley <laughs> Field beer snake. They have all the cups. They connect them and they start passing them up the you know all the way up the uh, bleachers. I don't know if it was the bleacher section out in the outfit. It might have been. I don't know where, but. They were showing it on the television broadcast. Cruck was having a blast with it. Ah, uh, say, I, I guess that's what I miss if I'm sitting in an actual <laughs> baseball viewing seat watching actual baseball. <laughs> there you go. All right, Frank Close covers the Phils for 97.3 ESPN.com. He'll be back on Tuesday with the Phillies mailbag, unless something breaks between uh, tomorrow and Monday. Uh, we'll, of course, have Frank's opinions on that.